Kissa. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, big up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, what a cup with team. Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone on this Friday, they say the best things in life come in threes. And whether that is true or not, it certainly is applicable to the mammoth clash we are expecting for the Issa da Costa Cup final set for the National Stadium in Kingston, Jamaica on Saturday. Clarendon College and Glenmuir will meet for the third time this season. CC won the first 2-1 in the quarterfinals of the da Costa Cup, while Glenmuir, in a match for the ages, toppled their rivals 3-2 in the Champions Cup knockout final last week. I am joined in studio by Lejay Williams or in-house football analyst and before i get but before i get to the da costa cup finals final set for saturday um, plus there's also the ben francis final a quick word Lijay, on what happened in the walker cup final earlier today jamaica college crowned walker cup champions um san andrew technical denied again by the dark blues but apparently there was an incident in the penalty shootout um, where a penalty was saved initially by the San Andrew technical goalkeeper. Um, the fourth official um, or the assistant determined that the, that the kick should be retaken apparently because the ball was not stationary at the point when contact was made. I'm not sure if you saw everything that unfolded, DJ, and can give us a breakdown and um, give us an understanding of how disappointing San Andrew Technical must be and how delighted Jamaica College would be to win the title. Yeah, you know, it was a, it's a game where uh, both teams, you know, they obviously have it out for each other, as I mentioned in the segment yesterday. You know, a lot of San Andrew Technical people close to the team were saying, you know, they can't wait to book JC in this final. And, you know, they, they had the better of them, I think, in the first half, but in the second half, Jamaica College started to turn the screw and I, I think when the penalty was given to Jamaica College for them to equalize, that's when a lot of the, the, the bad feelings started and we saw that because it, it was, it, it could have gone either way, I think, that penalty. I do think it was a penalty when that was scored, you know, the Jamaica College players then decided to celebrate by, you know, doing, gesturing to some of the same Andrew Technical um, fans and then the penalty shootout, now, as you mentioned, when the penalty was being taken, this would be the I believe the seventh penalty for Jamaica College, the, because of how dug out the penalty spot was, the ball was moving a lot, so a lot of players had to put it either at the back of the penalty spot or at the front of it. This player decided to put it in the middle, and then it moved as he was about to kick it. I'm not quite exactly sure the exact rules regarding that in a penalty shooter, but my understanding is that a, a set piece, any type of set piece, cannot be taken if the ball is not stationary. So. I'm assuming one of the assistant referees saw that overturned the save. All may mayhem literally broke loose. Um, and then St. Andrew Technical went on to miss. Uh, Jamaica College scored the retake and St. Andrew Technical went on to miss. And as I mentioned, there was a lot of mayhem from what I was seeing. I couldn't hear what was going on, but just from watching, I realized that Coach Philip Williams also didn't do his post-game interview. So there was a lot of stuff going on um, with the referees, the fans. The, the entirety of the national stadium looked stunned. So, that's something to definitely look out for in the coming days. Yeah, definitely. We will be speaking more about that in detail on Monday. Let's talk about, well, the Manning Cup final comes up this evening as well. That will be Mona taking on Heidel and what a cracker that is expected to be live on Sportsmax 2. Let's look ahead to the Da Costa Cup final though, Lijay, which will be on Saturday. Glenmuir versus Clarendon College for the third time this season. How mouth-watering is this one? Well, I think, Ricardo, you, know, you and I called the game um, last week, Saturday, so I think we, we both know how great of an encounter this was, not only from a viewing standpoint, as I mentioned before, I think tactically, this is one of the best schoolboy football games I've ever seen. The man marking all over the pitch, um, all of the tactical nuances straight across from both teams. I think up until that red card, it was completely fascinating and even. And I think even after the red card, Clarendon College continued to threaten. They could have equalised for after that hit the post twice, had chances to even make it 3 all at the end. So I think that the game was fantastic and I think it even sets up an even better game on Saturday because of the adjustments that will have to be made, not only by Clarendon College who will be missing Nashan Bolt, but also by Glenmere. I don't think the Andrew Page is going to come with the same play style and then want to turn over Clarendon College the same way. So I think we're in line for what is supposed to be a really good game. 
Yeah, you say a really good game, Leger, and you've been at most of the football matches, if not all. If Clarendon College is to win this match, what will give them the edge? That's a very good question, actually. I think the edge would be their experience, actually, because I think tactically, I'm not going to say that Andrew Peart can get the better of Lenny Hyde consistently, but I think Lenny Hyde is more stuck in his ways in terms of what he wants to accomplish on a football pitch. I think Andrew Peart, you know, being, a, a, as I mentioned, you know, a couple uh, a couple weeks ago at this point, uh, you know, his, his his mindset, you know, his philosophy, I think, is more one of a Eurocentric one, which means you're a, a bit more adaptable in, in certain instances. So I think that Andrew Peart will come with, you know, not necessarily changing his philosophy, but I think that he'll make adjustments. So I think for Klein, and I think he's just being steadfast in what they are trying to achieve, and I think that that's easy for them. But one thing I do think that really caught up to them in the Champions Cup final is a lack of discipline, especially from their biggest players. We saw Christopher Hull get a yellow card, Malachi Douglas get a yellow card, Devante Hodges get a yellow card, and Nashan Bolt get a red card. And Nashan Bolt is a national representative. I, I think that there was a lack of discipline, not, all, not tactically per se, but I do think that once they realized that Glenmuir was about to give them as good a match as they probably have gotten as a team over the years, you know, I, and they were a bit, maybe a bit complacent coming into the game. We saw a lot of um, ill discipline. It wasn't only that. We saw um, Devante Hodges also sh um, shove away one of the Glenmore players who are throwing. It was a lot of spurts of indiscipline. So they'll have to keep their emotions in check firstly and then try and execute the game plan because we know that Lenny Hyde is going to come with his usual brilliant self. Any area that Glenmore will have to improve on quickly come Saturday? Saturday's tomorrow, a few hours. <laughs> yeah, um, something I'm going to harp on, uh, you know, um, as Ricardo mentioned, the pregame show, we have this little segment called Keys to the Game. Um, yeah. I'll be touching on three things for each team, but most importantly for Glenmore, as I'm going to mention, I mentioned it in the first Keys to the Game also, tempo. Tempo is so important for Glenmore because I want everyone watching to think about it. If it were Klein and College up 3-1 in a final against Glenmore, I don't think Glenmore would have more than 10 touches of the ball for the remainder of the game. And I know that's what Andrew Peart wants to execute with Glenmuir, but maybe the players haven't quite, quite gotten that grasp yet. We know that Clarendon College has that grasp because we have seen them do it over the years. So I think tempo in terms of slowing the game down, be, you're a man up, you have the ball, control the ball. Too often I saw them try to go for long switches of play, trying to kill off the game, get the fourth goal, which I understand you're trying to get one up over your rivals, but tempo is going to be extremely important. The, the hero pass isn't always there. Um, I, I think they have to calm down, and once they calm down, maybe they'll calm down now that they've won. But once they calm down, I think that that will be the key to this game for Glenmuir. Yeah, quickly, how much more difficult is it though for uh, Glenmuir to, to slow the game down and play at the tempo that you are suggesting against uh, an, an experienced Clarendon College outfit? And not just experienced, but um, they are likely to press Glenmuir as we saw last week, and they have the players capable of doing it as well? Well, I mean, it is difficult because when you're facing a press, press means pressure, so you're going to get a bit rattled, but I think Andrew Peart has a quality and the temperament in his players usually to execute or get out of a press, and what Andrew Peart does is coach a numerical advantage, especially in build-up areas, so there shouldn't be any reason for Glenmuir not to be able to possess the ball, and I was especially alluding to when Clarendon College had 10 men, so there, there should be no reason for Glenmere not to do it except for a lack of temperament and that will lead to the tempo increasing when it doesn't need to. So that's something that we're going to have to look out for in the game and I'll expound more on it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Make sure you catch that pre-show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, also, Nashawn Bolt, as I understand it, will be out for the remainder of the season. Two matches, which is the remainder of the season, the Costa Cup final and if Clarendon College win, the Olivia Shield. Um, how big of a miss is that going to be for Clarendon College? Yeah, Nashan Bolt was performing at um, the highest level, I think, as a defender in schoolboy football going into that game. And I, and I mentioned him specifically also, I don't like Harper, that he the keys to the game as well. I think that his defending in wide, wide channels would be extremely important. He didn't get drawn out in wide channels too often in the Champions Cup final, but when he was asked to make that tackle in a central area, I think it's, it's important to recognize the difference between when you're tackling wide and you can afford to be beaten. Nashan Boltbart likes to slide in, likes to be aggressive in his challenges. When you're tackling centrally, much more nuances has to come into it. And he didn't have that nuance and that led to him being sent off. 
So it's going to be a huge miss, not only for his quality, but also his experience. So, and he's been playing the entire season. It's going to be a new centre-back pairing. We know that centre-back pairings like to work in tandem. Even if the rest of the squad is being rotated, your goalkeeper and your centre-back pairing is so important in terms of consistency. So it's going to be a huge miss. And I, I'm sure it's something that Glenmuir will target. Yeah, it's quite interesting because after he was sent off and Clarendon College went down to 10, there are many who say they looked even better um, than they did before um, they went down to 10. And of course, they had numerous opportunities. None fell for them. And Glenmuir went on to win by three goals to two. It's going to be an absolute classic. Another one at the National Stadium on Saturday. And before that will be the Ben Francis Cup knockout final um, from technical will take on McGraw high um, and yeah that will be the curtain eraser let's take a break we'll be back with interactive which will include the sportsmax class moment Could fall, but they never will know until the 